Fighting is unbearable. I do it because what it gives me, what it provides me, but bigger the risk, bigger the rewards. I've done it only to obtain what I have now. There's the freedom of life, the wealth, the health, even more importantly, but I needed to go through, through it. I think you gotta have a dream. The school of greatness. Really? <laughs> yeah. Please welcome Lewis House. Who is the most influential person in your life growing up? And, because I know you had an interesting childhood that I want to talk about, mm -hmm. and what was the greatest lesson they taught you? I think the most influential, the person that had the most influential influence on me was probably my dad. Mm -hmm. um, he was a very hard working man, and he taught me the, the value of hard work. Uh, he taught me a lot of good stuff that I've learned, and also a lot of stuff that I realized that he did very well, but stuff that I don't want to be like him. Mm, like what? I think he worked so much because he didn't have a choice. Is he, he comes from a family of nine kids. Uh, I'm from countryside. That's, yeah. that's where we grew up. So family tend to be bigger normally in the country because mm. <laughs> <laughs> they work on the farm and right, all that. Right. <laughs> and his dad died when he was young and he was the older mm. in, of his family of nine. So he had to, to become the dad and bring right. money. So I get, I, 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 I believe he get used to that life of working and working, working. And he's down the line, he lived to work and he didn't work to live. Mm. And that's one thing I don't want to do. Yeah. What's a good lesson? Yeah, I, I, he needed to at one point, it was a necessity, but I know very well now that it's not a necessity anymore for him. Right. But he still do it. Yeah. <laughs> it becomes a pattern. It right. becomes who you are, your personality, your identity, right? Yes. It's yes. hard to kind of take that off. And I, I think that if he does not do it, he feel useless. And, and now I, I thought before, because I'm very wealthy now, I'm, I'm I, I, I wanted to make sure like everything was taken care of for my parent. Yeah. And I thought that it would have taken easier because he would retire. <laughs> he relax. Yeah. No, he keep the same rhythm. So now I understood also that he need this to maintain his, his health. Mm. Because if he does not do it, you see very often older people when they retire, they die. Quickly. Because their brain, I, I believe it's because they're, they don't work their brains. They, you know, they... They need to stay active up here. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the way uh, my dad does it. Yeah. You also, I read about your childhood where you, you were pretty much bullied and picked on and people like beat you up and stole your money. Isn't that true? Yes, I am. Uh, I think it left a scar yeah. in, in my head. And um, yeah, I start martial art as a self-defense. Against that stuff, right? Yes. Wow. Uh, I was also a big fan of Jean-Claude Van Damme, Bloodsport. Oh, he's awesome. Bloodsport, Chuck Norris. Did Stevens. you do a movie with Jean-Claude Van Damme? I did. <laughs> and Ooh. I got my butt kicked by <laughs> Jean-Claude Van Damme, by Steven Seagal also. <laughs> what was that like doing a movie with your hero? It's it's amazing. I did this movie. It's it's. I mean, the movie, it's uh, it's not a movie that came out on, on theater. It's like on Netflix, but it's called Kickboxer. It's a reboot. I did it and just to have the experience to be able to have a fight scene with my idol, it was amazing. Wow. And uh, that's one of the reasons why I start martial art because of a self-defense and I got, I was bullied when I was young. And at the time, I saw it as a very negative experience and it was. But I realize now that the fact that I was bullied when I was young helped me later on in my life facing the mental warfare that I had to face in mixed martial arts because it's a very egotistic sport. Yes. There's a lot of intimidation when you get into a fight, especially during the promotion of the fight, the press conference. The press. And I, I, I got used to it when I was so young. So, and we see very often a lot of fighters, they lose their chill, so they- They, they go crazy. It, it can make them commit mistake, but they never worked with me because I had a very strong shield to protect me that I probably so, built built really? during my youth. So no one could say something to you that would get under your skin? No. They would I, talk I, about this or that or whatever. They can make anything up and you're just like, okay. That's right. I, I think the, the way to get to me would be not 
trying to get to me, try to try to get to someone that I love or like a family. That's really? why a lot of people ask me sometimes and say, hey, uh, you, you're very mysterious. You know, you're a public <laughs> person, but you always keep your private life private. And that's one of the reasons because fighting, you know, you play hockey, you play soccer, but you do not play fighting. So if I'm fighting you, it's very serious business because wow. the outcome of the fight might affect your well-being or mine. Your life. So, yeah, yeah. Your so, arm, your face, something. That's right. So if I can do something to you to make you derail from your uh, uh, your strategy by insulting someone that you love, I will do it in a heartbeat. You know, it, that's what fighting you would do is it. about. I mean, no, because I'm not a trash talker. I'm, I'm just <laughs> <'Cause> not good. <laughs> but most guys will. Yeah. If I can do something trying to play. I have done some stuff like, like for example, I'm fighting a guy that... I made him. I made him know that I am. I know one of his good training partner. That I, you know, I play right, mind right, games like this. Bit, I've yeah. done my mind games too. You're like I've trained with your training partner and exactly. I've destroyed him. Yeah, you know, and but I, he I, beats you. Yeah, I know. I know your training partner. You know, and he told me what he's, uh, what you're good at. And now he's getting angry. Instead of focusing uh, on me, he's getting angry at his training partner. So he's fo not focusing on the task ahead. He's focusing on something else that has Ooh. nothing to do. So I've done some the mind stuff. games. Yeah. I'm, I haven't done my own. I'm not a trash shocker, but I, I'm more slick. You know, yeah. I've, done, I've done my stuff. Yeah. That's probably an advantage because English wasn't your first language. So you maybe didn't feel the confidence to say a bunch of things. Yeah. I, I, was, I, I, I choose my battle very carefully. Yeah. And if I believe if I try to get into a trash talk contest with, uh, like my last fight with, was against Michael Bisping. He's known for his trash talk. If I would try to get into a trash talk fight, I would never win. He's from England, yeah. you know, and he's, I'm just not good at it on top of it. So <laughs> I do my, my talking in the octagon. In the, in the, <laughs> it's great, man. Um, what was, so I felt like I was picked on a lot as a kid as well. And it, it's what got me into sports. Mm -hmm. Cause I was like, I never want to get picked on, bullied, made fun of ever again. And I was picked last on sports teams early on. And I was like, I'm going to become so big, so strong, so dominant that people have to pick me. They have to choose me, that I will win at all costs. And I built a shield as well. So I can kind of relate in a sense. Yeah. What did that teach you about building this, you know, identity around self-defense, around karate, around jujitsu, all the different mixed martial arts that you built for decades? What did that do for you, that identity? For me, right now, training, like people ask me, why do you train? You don't have a fight coming up. For me, it's not because on, only I like it. It's because it's a it's a therapy. Yeah, I believe be, because I was bullied when I was young, it left a scar in my mind. And it might sound crazy to most of people because I, most of them cannot relate to that. But because when I was young, I got bullied so much. I got humiliated so much. And sometimes physical damage is not as bad as like emotional, emotional damage yeah. and that's what happened to me so i need to train i remember even sometime when i when i'm not I'm not in shape and i've or i got an injury i don't feel as confident and I, as i am and mm. i don't know i know i would never get probably beat up because you know i'm, I'm an adult now but right. I, I i don't know it's inside my head like it's a question it's a confidence thing for me and I believe confidence is very important for me. So it, I like to walk in a room knowing that if something happens, I can take care of business. Yeah. I know it sounds maybe preposterous because we're in a very civilized world, right. but because I was victim when I was young, it left, a, it left that scar. And yeah, and, and I know confidence is very important because you could have all the skills that you want. And I'm not only talking about fighting, I'm talking about everything. Yes. <clears throat> if you have the skills, but you do not have the confidence, I believe it's like someone who have a lot of money in his bank account, but no way of accessing it. Mm. For the magic to happen, I think you need the skills and the confidence. Do you feel like you ever learned how to heal from the bullying? I think it left a scar, but sometimes it's for the, the best and sometimes mm. for the worst. There's good things. That it, that it trained you to become a right. killing machine, essentially, right? It trained you to become a disciplined human being, goal-oriented, you know, structure with your life. Yeah, and, and, and I'm not a psychologist, but I think it, it helps me to be stronger, to face adversity. Yeah. Um, so when you get ready for a fight, 
it's it's the stress the fear it's unbearable and and uh, there's no courage without fear and for a long time because of looking looking around me in my entourage before a fight sometimes i corner other fighters and everybody react differently mm. other fighters you, you'll see them there some of them are very excited they're in the locker room like yeah yeah some are quiet and i'm nervous. thinking yeah. yeah and i'm thinking I'm like man this guy's a psychopath like, like <laughs> no when fear. i'm getting ready for a fight i'm scared like deep down inside like yeah i, I pretend that yeah, i'm happy like, and everything yeah everything's good <laughs> Yeah, but deep down, deep down inside, I'm like, shoot, what the hell I'm doing here? Oh God, I don't. And every fight day, you don't, feel, I don't feel good because I, I sleep terribly, terribly the night before every time because I make too much scenario in my mind. It becomes like an obsession. So I think it, it, it build up that tolerance and that uh, that courage to go face certain mm. adversity that you would not have the courage to face if you wouldn't, if I wouldn't have gone through that. Really. How often did you doubt yourself when you were competing? Was it every fight? Would, and there's, would there's, you doubt yourself in training days too, or just during fight days? Well, in training also, because mm-hmm. in training you try to not every day, but you, sometimes it's, the training is very hard and it's borderline very dangerous. Even though we have equipment, you can get knocked out. So we try to recreate the same environment that you will face in a fight because in, in a fight, you're always outside of your comfort zone. Yeah. And I believe in order to improve, you need to get out of your comfort zone because it forces you to adapt. And pe- the mm-hmm. fighters that are the best are people that adapt, that become the perfect nemesis to their opponent. Oh, yeah. So every training, you're on the I'm floor, you're, myself. you've got one arm back, you're like having every to get out of time. every horrible scenario. So I see the lineup of my aspiring partner and, the, <laughs> and I fly them from outside, you know, because I don't, when I'm, that's one thing, when I'm getting ready for a fight, I don't train with my normal training partner because- Why? You're used to it. No, because the reason I'm used to them, so there is some kind of camaraderie. Oh, so I fly yeah. a lot of the guys, so you don't like I don't them. know them, I never touch them, I don't know their movement oh. pattern. And I don't know them so emotionally. I know they're ready. there, and they maybe try to take my head off, but but it's the same uncertain feeling. Wow! I'm nice, hey, hey, hey. but when when the rings start talk, like you don't know, they're like, some to, guys are nice, but they're gonna try to go crazy. Really? So I never, I always doubt myself before every fight. The only fight that I doubt, I did not doubt myself was when I fought Matsuro the first time and I got knocked out. No way. <laughs> I swear. You had confidence. You were and like, I had a I got great this. night of sleep the night before. That's the only fight. And I got humiliated. And I've learned from that mistake because it taught me that I should never underestimate anybody. Mm. So it takes one moment, one punch, right? You zig when you should have zag at this level. You 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 don't even have time to blink. It's too late. It's moment. You're done. That's right. They're already ringing the bell. It was a, a terrible experience for me, but I, uh, I think it made, made me a better fighter at, at the end. So you doubted yourself. <laughs> I, I know some experience can be taught. Yes. And the best way to learn it's always through other people's mistakes. Mm-hmm. However, at that time, I, was, I just became champion. I beat Matt Hughes. Mm-hmm. I was like the, the next big thing. I was borderline cocky, not publicly. I've never been a cocky guy, but deep down inside, I'm like, man, I'm the best. I had this guy, uh, it's, he's got nothing on me. And, and I, people telling me that, I start believing it. You're the greatest, You're, yeah. Yeah, but so, boom, uh, one shot that I didn't see coming. Oh, man. Cut me. And I got dizzy. And I remember it like it's yesterday. And I was so angry. I got more emotional. I was like, man. I can't let that happen. I mean, I got, I got to give it back to him right away. I tried to get myself into a slugfest, no. which is not a good thing to do when you're dizzy. So you, he was accurate and I wasn't. Bang, bang, bang. I end up on my back and now <laughs> I'm confronted like, <laughs> to my worst nightmare. Oh, man. So am I going to go out on my shield like this <laughs> or I'm tapping out like a coward? I tap out like a coward. You tapped out. In Ooh. MMA, it's a big, big thing. And I got blamed a lot because he said, oh, he's a quitter, he tap out. And now I'm older. When I look back at things, it's and it's a little bit like Roberto Duran, no mass against Sugar Ray Leonard. It's a good thing that I've done. I don't regret. I regret it in, in, when it 
happened the, the few weeks, month after, mm -hmm. because I, I saw it like a coward move. Yes. But now Man. it's a sport. We're not in a war like a soldier. And I tapped out. Maybe if I would not have tapped out, I would get brain damage. I would never have come back the exactly. same. So I saved myself for another day. So there's no shame in it. Absolutely. And now I'm proud to say it in front of everybody. That's great, man. But I wasn't proud of myself. I was humiliated because I tapped out on strike. That's why I was humiliated. I was not necessarily humiliated because I lost. Because it's like a big taboo in my memory. Oh, you tapped out on strike. Other fighter was looking down, down on me. Like, oh, was on a I, strike, not on like an arm bar or something. Yes, you tapped down on strike. That was a big thing. Most people don't tap out on a strike, right? They just kind no, of get beat up, up they're and chilled. Someone, and then they, someone takes them off. And that, that's the right. They wait for the referee, but... But, but then you're getting it, 10 more blows to the head, which could right. do some serious that's damage right. for the rest of your life. So it makes people wonder, it's like, oh, he's a coward, he's a quitter. Da, da, da. So I, I had a lot of anger. I felt like I needed to come back and had a lot of things to prove. And I remember I used to, to carry that inside and I wanted to get my revenge as fast as possible. And I saw a sport psychologist and he says to me, he says, you're not focusing on the right thing. You're, mm. you're focusing always on what happened in the past. You live in the past. You need to live wow. in the present moment, not live in the future, live in the present. So he made me carry a brick and he made me wrote a name. Sarah, Matt Sarah on it. And I carry that brick every day in my, in my gym bag. Yeah, a, brick? a big brick, a brick. With this name with on a, it. With a chuck, I wrote, I wrote Sarah on it. And I carry that brick every day, every training. And after a while, like, man, my it's bag is heavy. heavy for nothing, it suck, you know? And I carry it, carry it, until the time I got tired of carrying it. Mm -hmm. And I told him, I said, hey man, I'm tired of that shit. you know? He says, I'm coming to see you. He's a, his name is Brian Kane. He's a, he's a sport psychologist. I took the brick. I went near the Saint Laurent River. I know it sounds crazy. And I threw it in the river. And I feel deliver. I felt like, man, I, I, I know it sounds crazy to many people, but because I cannot relate, but I feel great because by this physical gesture, mm. an emotion just manifest. And mm. it's an emotion of, of Deli delivering me like I didn't have like you know sometimes you have stress you're all stuck you the same it. thing I release by chewing the brick in the river I know it sounds crazy but no, it, 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 it play a big role into the growth of my career I'm a big believer in I mean I've worked with and interviewed many sports psychologists and I started doing this stuff when I was I don't know 16 uh, visualizing and meditating and all these letting go of the past from this stuff so I'm a huge believer and I'm a big believer in rituals Rituals to prepare you for your event or your sport or a game or a match. Rituals to let go of something, whether it be a relationship, it be writing letters and letting go and forgiving, or releasing something into a river and an ocean. I'm a big believer in the ritual process of letting go. Otherwise, we'll always carry something. That's right. So how long did you carry this brick for? I carry it for a long time. I, I, I carry it. I was about to fight because when I lost the title the first time. Because you won it and then you lost the next match. The next yeah, fight, right? I won against Matt. You was at the time the, the greatest of all time. So yeah. I, be, I became myself the new kid on the block. Like I'm, like You're what, 20? How old are you? I was like 23, 24. I was young. So I and then lost the, same, the next fight. Yeah, I gained, I gained a, lot of, a lot of wisdom through, through that, like, you know, in a way, like I love them, I have a lot of knowledge. So I lost the, the next fight. And uh, now everybody was saying, like, oh, is that, you know, we don't, people say, oh, don't pay attention to the critics. But I think we should pay attention to a certain point because it helps you get better. Not if it makes you crazy and obsessive, but if it helps you just enough to get better, I, I think it's a good <clears> thing. <throat> so people now start doubting me saying, oh, uh, he's not as good as people um, think. And he's a quitter. He's a quitter. That was the big thing. Tapped out. I never quit in my life. And I was, people see me as oh, a quitter. I was man. very, very angry at, at myself. For, yeah. Not necessarily for losing, but for tapping out. And when, when I did this, I was getting ready for another fight because I couldn't go back to a revenge, a rematch against that guy. Yeah, I need to go to yeah. other contenders in order to get my revenge. So I was not focusing on my immediate opponent. I was focusing on that guy that I want and which is a mistake. Mm. So I could have lose down the road. So I did the brick thing right before my, my match. Really? And then I was able to focus on the present. 
knowing where I was going, but I was like focusing on what's going, the task ahead. And then I got my rematch in Montreal in front of my family, my friend. Right. I was able to redeem myself and win the title against Matt Serra for the second time. But you had already let go of the brick. Oh, ah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which gave you a lot of peace. Now, I'm curious about, it's almost like you need to kill your ego. Yeah. Like, in order to tap out, you need to be like willing to kill your ego and not be like, well, I'm going to be this tough guy and just wait till I'm knocked out and go out on my, my shield or my sword. Yeah. But why is it so hard for people, especially in that sport, but in general, to let go of their ego, do you think? I think personally, my ego, my pride, it's one of the, my best asset as a fighter, but also one of the worst issues I have in the society. Tell me more. Example, um, my pride, I'm a very proud person, and that's why I train so hard, yeah. because fighting is so important for me. So I don't want to go there and, and lose and be humiliated mm -hmm. because my friend, my family will see it and remember that moment. So I do it not only for myself, I do it for the others, wow. because the way they look, look on me, that's why I'm so proud. It, it, I'm always training with that in behind mm. the back of my mind. However, it can become an obsession at one point. <laughs> because if you, if, and, and I'm, I'm a little bit obsessive compulsive, yeah. I think. You'll train 10 hours a day. It will train 10 hours a day. And I'm, I'm the kind of guy that when I get ready for a fight, the idea of fighting the person, the scenarios hunt my mind you go over every scenario in your mind I over eat it. you watch it all day long everything they do every train it repetition how do i get out of this how do everything. i get out of this and sometimes before a fight it haunts you so much that you when you eat when you drive your car before you go to bed when you wake up when you go to bed every, every time every time to the point that there's some highlight that pop ups in your head sometimes and sometimes you see yourself winning sometimes you see yourself losing however the trick that I've learned is, and I think one of the reasons of success, I believe that I stay very strong mentally is that, and sometimes it pops in your head. It, it's not because you want, it's just pop in your head. You don't control it. And you don't, you're in trouble. Sometimes you're not winning. However, you never want to let go your thought on a negative ending. You always mm -hmm. want to let go. Let's say you're in trouble. You want to think about, force yourself of thinking. It's like, even if you're in the middle of something, you say, wait a second, put things on pause and say, okay, if this happened, then I'm going to do this, this, this to get out of trouble and get the upper end. Wow. Now I can go do my thing. You know what I mean? Wow. So that's how I, that's what I've been doing through all my life. But it become an obsession because it hunts, it hunt you, hunt you. And it, I believe it hunt me because of my pride, because I, I care so much about it. I don't want to be humiliated that it, <laughs> it go, it, it, it's working up there. So when you're going through scenarios, in your mind, it's happening all day, right? In your all sleep, day. all day, you know. And the closer you get to the fight, it's, it's like a up. funnel, like, like on the other mm -hmm. way, you know, it gets worse and worse and worse and worse, it's terrible. How often would you imagine yourself losing? When you, you... Or would you always find a way, you okay, would, I'm getting out of it? No, when you instigate yourself, the when you instigate the visualization you you you, you focus on the positive thing however yes. sometime like anything in Mind life you, 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 <laughs> there is something that will pop in your head very often it's a yeah. threat and this imagery will be negative however you don't want to let it like i said you don't want to let it hang on the negative note before you go back to what you do you want to okay wait a second okay Whoa, 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 wait. Okay, this, you you put me down. Now, now okay, I'm going to humble you, nah, 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 and then I'm going to win the fight. And I, that, okay, now, now, what we're doing now? And that's so you how write the script. You write the I don't script. write. I do it all mentally. Yeah. I, I mean, do not you're write. writing it in your mind. It's though, all right? a word. Yeah. It's a different world that happened yes. in my mind. It's a movie in your mind. Yes. And that movie, by the time I get to the fight, I've seen almost every possible scenarios. I've seen myself in trouble in any possible ways because I run it through my mind so many times. So when I get into the fight, it's like, it's not the first time I've lived through this. And right. when I fought Michael Bisping, just to give you an example, the was choke. Like five years ago, right? Yes. When I came out, I came out after four years, I, 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 I people say, oh, you didn't look that rusty. It's because I play stuff in my mind all the time. So maybe physically I was not competing, but I, I did in my mind. And the way I finished the fight, 
people will think I'm lying, but I visualized it. Really? Yes. I didn't know for sure that would that's be the how way. I, yeah. But I know that I remember visualizing it exactly like it happened. Or, or if it's not exactly like I knew it was going to pass out and I got him like this after dropping in. So when you had him like that, were you just like, oh, yeah, this was already... Did you just know it was over when you had him behind? Were you like, this is ending? So this fight, yeah. So, so the way it happened is, is uh, if I recap the end, Michael Bisping is a bigger man. He's taller than me. And one of my strategies, because most people will not know that because when they watch a fight, they think it's only people, two, two guys trying to scrap each other. When you're fighting a taller guy, he's punching down on you because the, Michael is taller than me. Because he's punching down on you, he's wide open. Right. However, if you're like me, smaller than him, and you're punching up, you're protected. So the idea for mm. me, because he's taller, was to start a combination to the body. So if I start to the body, it will crutch me down, it will force him to punch me down in the exchange and then come back to the top. Wow. And that's why I did with the hook. That's how I dropped him. Wow. It was part of my strategy. We, we practiced it many times. Once I dropped him, I tried to finish him off with elbows but he's very resilient, he resists. <laughs> and I know that Michael is very good at standing back up from, from his back. But the way he does it, he likes to go on four, four point on his limb because he's very strong like this. And he's so strong that you can't stop him. However, there is a catch to it. <laughs> he exposes his back. Ooh. So I give him an opening. When I knew I, I, he was coming back to himself and I, I wasn't able to finish him, I give him an opening. You let him up. stand up. Let him. You give him a moment. So he went back on four, four point, like I thought. Then he exposes back. And that's you when I, I went. So this, I knew for a long time. I didn't know for certain that that's how I would have finished the fight. But I knew it was a possibility. And I visualized it many times. Many, many times. When you're visualizing in training camp, are you visualizing the win over and over again? Or are you more putting yourself in adverse situations to get out of both and both are very important just to, to do like okay the one punch it's going to be easy and i can right. see every he's not going to touch me and everything's going to be smooth and then also what happens if it's all challenging so there's always an x factor there's things that are unexpected that can happen in a fight for example a finger in the eyes oh, right. like this maybe you haven't taught through that. When they hit you in the groin. And exactly. Yeah, it's like... It's just things like this that you, you haven't perhaps not yeah. visualized, but I do personally visualize everything, like every situation. Maybe I did not physically drilled it exactly the same, but I visualized mm. it. If I didn't revisualize it exactly the same because I'm, I'm obsessed, <laughs> I've done a very close Similar. version yeah, yeah, of, yeah, it, yeah. of it. Yeah. <laughs> so... You talked about doubt and confidence. You said you need to have, the time you were the most confident is the time you lost. The time you slept like a baby and you were like, I got this, you lost. Every other fight you said you had some doubt. Yeah. I feel like doubt also holds us back from being our best. That's right. So how do you build confidence and not let doubt cripple you from not taking action and playing scared and playing like, weak you know yeah. soft so i believe confidence it's a state of mind but you can work on it mm -hmm. and of course you need to train hard but most importantly you need to train smart you need mm -hmm. to work smart and this is applied to everything in life mm -hmm. and to make an analogy is a good analogy is let's say i have an exam at school yes and it's a very important exam like a decisive one and i did study I will be scared still of the result, mm -hmm. but I will be more confident, but I'm still gonna be scared. Because you know you put the work in. Yes. Yeah. And I have reason to be confident, but I'm still gonna be scared. Just as scared that if I would not have studied. The same thing in a fight. So confidence is, if I got a fight, there's always an X factor, an unknown factor, because I do not control my opponent, but I do control it's myself. Mm -hmm. So I work as hard and as good as I can to get myself ready that I know that there's no way I cannot be better than I am right now. Yeah. This is confident. Now I have the right to go in there and be confident. And calm, and yeah, yes. and relax. But I'm still gonna be just as scared <laughs> as if I would not have worked out, but just as scared, but I'm confident. Yeah. And when you work hard and 
smart and get very well prepared. On top of that, I believe, because I'm a big believer of that, of that, but I always act and put on a mask like for me, it's impossible to fail. To fail. Deep down inside, even in, in front of my team, in, and my team knows, like my trainer knows how I am, because deep down inside, I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm, I'm in this again. But the day of the fight, I'm in the locker room because I want to carry Stoic. a positive yeah. attitude and I want my team to be positive. Mm -hmm. So even though I have doubt, I cannot let that happen. And my team, if they're scared, they cannot let that happen sure, yeah, because yeah. it would be a, a, a breach. And if there is a breach, there's an opening. Mm. So we have to stay united and strong. We go to war together. Wow. So I'm very scared, but I go and, and I don't show it. I show confidence. And even every every five days, I feel like, very bad but inside my, you're just like oh, yeah. screaming you're like, oh I'm t it's, i feel terrible I, I always wake up in the morning and say oh man it's, i don't feel good today and when my trainer <laughs> asks me how do you feel today i'm like can't wait it's gonna be a lot of fun i can't wait but they know i'm they be, because they know they know i'm playing games and they they kind of laugh uh, and after we never tell the truth until the fight is over but after i'm saying hey it is, and then, all right i went to bathroom i show up a bit i tell the real thing but before that, until the war is over, we're playing the role of, of an invinci invincible, invincible fighter because we go to war as one unit. What happens if you told the truth? Hey, coach, I'm not feeling good today. I'm just not sure. Did I do enough scenario? Did we train hard enough? What happens to a fighter or anyone in life, in, in business, sport, whatever, what is if the they same? actually say the truth? Well, it's the same thing if I would make an analogy. You go ask a girl on a date and you go not with no confidence. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, would you please? I mean, if you wouldn't mind to come to the movie. <laughs> Can I get your number? Like, it's not yeah. very attractive. Or, or you go for a job interview, you go like like this, shaking like, yeah, I'm, I would work really hard. Like like the guy's like, yeah, I don't want to get that guy. Right. So it's the same thing. Like you go, when you do something, you go, you need to come out 100% or don't come out at all. Mm. When I do something in life, I, I go 110%. I win, I win big, I lose, I lose big. But I'm not gonna go and lose and tell myself after, oh, I wish I would have. Because yeah. I've done a lot of stupid things in my life. And, and I, but there's things that I, it's hard to live with is regret. That's the worst. And for me, regret is the worst. So I don't wanna have regret. Yeah, do you have any regrets? I have a lot of regret because you know, like when I tap, I had regrets. Now um, you've let that go. You've, I let that go. When so you want to live Matt, forever now. Yeah. Yes, yeah. <laughs> when Matt, Matt Hughes uh, was a, a number, one, number one contender at one point, and Matt Hughes, uh, after one of his fights, I, I believe it's against BJ Penn, he, he won the fight, and everybody, because I was, they were trying to promote the fight, they were like telling me, like, George, come in the octagon, come in the octagon, say something. Because I thought he, he was speaking on, on the mic, I thought he was insulting me, but I, d I couldn't hear because of the wow. sound in the yeah. arena. It was so many people. So I went in the octagon and I tell him, I'm not impressed by your performance. And that's where it comes from. But I regret it. And I went, I apologized after him because that was his moment. That was his yeah, win. Yeah. And I tried to take that away from him to make it about me. And it, it was a big mistake. I regret that. But I apologize. I, re I don't. The fact that yeah, I apologize yeah. <clears throat> makes me feel better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. When was the moment in your life you had the most fear? So that's another thing. And it could Fear. be it could be in the octagon or in just another area of your life. Oh. Any area of your life. The most you felt afraid. That's a good question. I believe uh, if it's outside the octagon, I, I was afraid. Um, I got into a, a car accident uh, mm. when I was um, when I was a teenager, I just had my driving license. And I got into a car accident and um, the moment, I mean, you talk about fear, the moment, like the split second that you realize what's going on, like, holy shoot, like, like you dance, it's like crazy. But I believe fear, we talk about fear, I believe it could be a good thing. Fear mm. can save your life. Mm. Like in, in fighting, it could, I believe it could enhance my performance. And I thought when I was young that fear will go away with time because I will get used to it. And you never get used to it because every fight is bigger than the last one. More pressure and more, yeah. more to lose. Now I embrace it because I need it. 
and I know that it increased my reaction times and mm. make me more explosive and increase my decision making time. So I need fear. So I, if I would go fight and I would not have fear, first it's because perhaps I don't care about it. So I believe fear can save your life. When I had that car accident, I tense myself. <laughs> And the, the impact, boom, but I was so tense. Like maybe my head didn't hit the... Wow. It, maybe I, had, I, I produced so much strength and isometric uh, tension <laughs> yeah. that it made me like a block and my head did not hit But because wow. the car was badly damaged. Wow. So I think fear is a good thing. It could be a good thing. We <laughs> see fear as a negative thing. I think yeah. it, we should embrace it. It's something that can save our life. What's your biggest insecurity in your life right now? Well... Biggest insecurity. Because you're this, you know, multiple champion, you're movie star now, you've, you know, you've done a lot of great things at 40. You're in better shape ever than now. I, I think my, my biggest insecurity all throughout my life was because I was so much concerned about performance and was able to not be able to deliver as good as I should. Now, my biggest insecurity I mean, it's not a problem. I do not have this, not even, not even close to the same amount of stress I used to have. Now I'm doing, now, now I'm 40 <laughs> years old, I'm, I'm just doing the fun stuff it's now. <laughs> I, I'm so happy. All the rewards. Yeah. But the thing is, insecurity that, I had my lot of insecurity earlier in my life. Some people, but, but that's why now I don't have to have it because I have so much insecurity, like all that negative tension for me, that's how I put it in perspective. I, I put it all in my in my early in my life, so then after I can have a smooth ride. Right. But I needed to have it. So some people put that amount of insecurity, maybe they stretch it to down their life. Maybe that, for me, those 10 years of my career were so crazy because I never liked it. I never liked to fight because it you don't put like me to fight. In. Never, I never like it. I like to train. I like the science of fighting. I never f loved to fight. I never enjoyed it once. You didn't it, enjoy fighting? Never night? even once. And the reason why I did it it's because I was very good at it. It's because it gave me a lot of money. Mm -hmm. It gives me the freedom. Uh, when I was young, it was all the girls, right. the, the dream life, the, 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 the celebrity, the yeah. access of things that people don't have access. And I was very gifted at it. That's why I did it. People are like, why do you fight them? Because I, it's not the same person. The, the George that speak to you now is not the same person. And, and, and I have two mm. personalities. It's a little bit like, like, uh, like, uh, like in a movie. The way I explain that is, and every day of my life, I'm Georges St. Pierre. I'm a nice guy. I don't like to fight. I like to train. I love. I like the fitness to be yeah, fit, yeah, training, yeah. and everything. The science, fighting. fighting is unbearable. I do it because what it gives me, what it provides me. But bigger the risk, bigger the rewards. So all that insecurity thing, I done it only to obtain what I have now: the, the freedom of life, the wealth, the health. Even more importantly, mm -hmm. but I needed to go through to it. The Georges St. Pierre doesn't like to fight. However, when I go train, like earlier, I trained with Freddie Roach. When I start yeah. hitting pad, ping, ping, something happened to me, like a psychological transformation, because I remember the mechanic of my movement wow. and how good I am at this stuff. <laughs> and now you become a different animal. Now you're like, man, I like I this. Ping, 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 Yeah, yeah, so you become a different animal. Wow. So it's the same thing before I fight you, you, you you're so scared and terrified but when you start warming up it makes you, you remember that you're good at this you have done this many many times and you're good and then your confidence grow you become a different animal so that, that's how i see it people it's very hard for them to understand it's a love hate relationship so when you talk about inse insecurity it's had my lot of insecurity throughout my life now it's the fu fun stuff ahead of me now in movie for me, yeah, it's a lot of it. it's a hard. It's not a hard job, man. It's nothing. <laughs> it's fun. Nothing. It's compared to fighting. Yeah, if I miss if I miss out, oh, I can't okay, do it again. Yeah. Like, this is <laughs> easy. Yeah, my insecurity is that maybe if I if I make myself look bad and so what? I'm not, like, yeah, I mean, it sucks, yeah. but I'm I'm not gonna die. I'm not gonna, you know. It's like, you're yeah, not, you're not breaking your arm. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So so it's the fun stuff now. I don't yeah. have, and, and you know, I'm always concerned about health and stuff like that. Uh, people. People I love, they, their health. I would say I'm diagnosed with ulcer colitis, and I, so at one point it was insecurity. But mm. what is it I, called? Ulcer, ulcer colitis. It's a ulcer colitis. it's an inflammation of the colon, uh, really? the intestine. So what I did is I did uh, I start fasting, 
Uh, I cannot recommend it to anybody right. because everybody is there, but it works for me. And I think intermittent really, fasting, 16 intermittent hours, fasting, 16 and, and 8. Yeah, I did 16 and 8, and also I, I did a prolonged fasting three days, five days water fast, mm -hmm. and it diminished all my inflammation problem. Wow. And I get rid of all my symptoms now. I'm you're uh, fine. Now. I don't need any, I, I'm medication free now. How long were you on medication for? <sighs> for the first uh, six months, but then I. I the idea of fasting at first when I start investigating it seems preposterous to me mm -hmm. because we live in a society that we're bombarded by publicity all the time. I eat this protein yes. shake, uh, this, that to get big. We're, we're, the company promote this and it, it, it kind of get into our head. So the idea, if I would not have never had that condition, which I have probably for the rest of my life, I would never have done fasting. So you've been eating more and more still. I would yeah. never have believed you. If you would have told me, even if you're a doctor, you will tell me I go try to fasting. I was like, this guy's nah, out of his mind. I need five meals a day. I'm yeah. gonna eat, yeah. So I, I, it, this thing needed to happen to me in order to discover fasting. Wow. And I'm glad, it, and I wish I would have done it when I was younger. And I talk to younger <sighs> people sometimes about it, say, hey, it's worth investigating. You should try it if it works for you, if, if, you know? Absolutely. And they laugh at me. It's true. I, think it's, I, well, I started doing intermittent fasting probably four years ago, and I'm, I've done a three and a half day no food, mm. just water and coffee, um, and that was inspiring. You know, to see the clarity I had. You know, I lost I think like seven or eight pounds in like three and a half days, but just like feeling better, sharper. I wasn't. I was giving my body a rest, my digestive, digestive system. So, what's the farthest you've gone without food? I've done five days. Five days, just uh, uh, but in those, the thing is, when I do fast, I I still train. That's I, crazy. I, because I I believe it get you in autophagy faster. Yes, yeah, so you're just getting rid of the dead cells. Yeah. I do not train. I mean, the first two days I do exactly in our normal training, but the the third, fourth, and five days I I start I modify my training. Slower, yeah, less. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, because otherwise you have you no hurt. energy. No, no, and you you cannot hurt yourself. And and I wanted to do a week. At first, but after four days, I started having troubles to sleep. And, and the yeah. fifth day, I told myself, I said, I'm doing this for the, for the benefit, not because not I want to break a record. Because yeah. I have that <laughs> crazy competitive yes. spirit. Yeah. And I said, you know what? Well, I'm good. Let it go and, and yeah. just, just, little, just little like, tap it out. That's I think fine. for me personally, everybody's never, for me personally, the sweet spot, it's three days. Three the way days, my yeah. system is, for yeah. me, it's three days. Maybe for you, it's a different and for someone yeah. else, but. Three days was good for me. Too. For me, I think it's the perfect sweet spot. I've, I've done three days twice, and then I've done a two day a couple of times, and I'm, I want to do a twenty. Well, I want to do like a thirty six hour once a month. What makes you start fasting? What what, what is, um, is it for? Uh, I think it was like health, health benefits. Yeah, I was like I was a little bit overweight. I mean, I was I mean I was probably like fifteen pounds more than now. So I was like, ah, you know, how do I get rid of this belly fat? Like, finally get rid of it. And it was also I was getting some like eczema. Oh, like a little skin. I was yeah. like, is this allergies? Is this food? I don't know what it is. Or is it stress? Am I holding on to something emotionally? So I was just trying everything. And then I interviewed a lot of experts who were talking about fasting. So I was like, let me explore and test this out. Um, I think I was telling you beforehand, I just interviewed someone who does water only fasting for seven to 40 days. Wow. And he has people come in and, and do it in his clinic, modify it, make sure he's watching them all. So I'm just... I'm fascinated by how to extend the quality of my life. Yeah. Happier, healthier, yeah. more flexible, um, look better. I love that you said you look better now than the last when you were 20 years fighting. Yeah. I, I mean, recently I've done a, That's crazy. I was doing it. Yeah. Yeah. I feel, I feel better. And, and imagine if I would have known what I've known now and put that when I was in my 20s. And, freak of nature. I, I don't, I don't, I, I'm not a doctor, but I don't know if fasting is good for a a teenager, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Maybe because he's not, he hasn't grown uh, right. fully yet. But like, if I would have known what I've known now, perhaps I would never have had my uh, ulcer colitis problems. And maybe, you know what I mean? Maybe I would, I would not have that like two ACL tear and then that, you know? So now, you had now two? I, I thought you just had one. You had two? Had Both two. knees? I had two. I had my surgery done by uh, Dr. Ella Trash. The thing is in Canada, the health, care system is free, but everybody get treated the same. So if you're a pro at, professional athlete, you have the same treatment as a lady who's, really? for, for example, uh, 70 years old. So I'm an athlete, so I need to react, to have a good surgeon and, and also rehab faster best, than a yeah. normal person yeah. because that's my job. 
So that's why I came in LA. I, uh, Dr. Latrash did my two ACL and uh, I rehab with uh, Edder M Milligan and um, in uh, with Gavin McMillan in uh, Orange County. It was wow. great, the best thing I've done. For now how long? He, it came back even better than it was. Really? Yeah, a good you six months. You stronger now? Six months. Six yeah. months? Yeah, six months. Yeah. Now you're probably, I'm assuming, you probably had the best nutritionist, the best sports psychologist, doctors, camp that you're working with but even then you didn't know about fasting it wasn't really that popular 10 15 years ago right i, I know I and mean, it wasn't popular maybe it was but i never you would have paid like, attention no, I gotta I eat my food. Yeah. Like, like, and and nutritionist i never had really a nu nutritionist really? until last may i tried that that animal based diet and I, I never i always eat whatever i want whenever i want because you're a genetic freak too and you're burning so many I calories burn a lot of and energy. Like, yeah uh, and and i believe some people so you yeah, have I mean, a faster metabolism, which is advantageous mm -hmm. nowadays, but perhaps 12,000 years ago in the hunter-gatherer society, it would not have been so advantageous right. because food was more scarce. Mm -hmm. So a guy like me maybe would have died. <laughs> <laughs> would have died earlier, yeah. you know? So were you eating, when you mean you were eating everything like pizza and ice cream? Everything. You were just like, whatever I want, I'm going to eat it. Yeah. I, I, one thing I would have, I would, I did is like maybe a month before a fight, I would try to Cut down the, the desert. No, no desert. No, uh, no, no sugar. No sh well, yeah, I eat sugar, but no, uh, let's say ch excessive desert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would have taken it, but no excessive, no excess on sugar because I'm, I'm a kind of excess person. Mm -hmm. And then <laughs> you're it, all it, in. You're like. It's not one scoop of ice cream, it's the whole bucket that's of ice right. cream. It's I'm not a, that, one slice of pizza, it's the whole pizza. Yeah. Maybe two pizzas. It, it's, that's one <laughs> thing. It, 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 it also manifests when I eat, it manifests when I party, uh, when I drunk. I mean, day. I don't, there's a line I don't cross, but if I if I know we party and I drink, I'll drink and I get drunk. And then, you know, like, like yeah. not, not every time, but if it's a party and I'm with a good good friends and I'll take yeah, advantage and have fun. Because it, it clear my mind the next day I can start <laughs> out fresh, you know? Yeah. But uh, same thing with food, you know? Take a, I'm, I'm the man, I'm a little bit of an, of an excessive personality, yes. but yes. before a fight, I, I I, I used to right told, tell myself no alcohol, no to no sugar. no sugar too much. And, That's good. But outside of that, it was bad. I eat like very bad. So it wasn't until really a year ago when you started to focus on nutrition, and you yeah. tried you tried the not the carnivore diet, but which which diet? I try a not an exclusive carnivore diet, yeah. but I try a animal based diet. Animal based uh, diet. Yeah, um, guy. Uh, the person who guided me is Paul Saladzno. Um, his uh, Instagram is at carnivoremd. Okay, and uh, what did this consist of? He's a, he's a doctor, and um, it uh, consists of uh, mainly you try to feed off animal organs. Mostly uh, the organs. You try you try organs because if you look at nature, when a predatory <laughs> animal the lion goes kill, after the stomach. That's right. They leave the they leave the leg. Right? They go that's the to, last. They go for the the, 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 the stomach. Heart, the when a horse kill a great white. It eats the liver, like like every animal. Like even when I went to Africa, I went to, to see the Maasai. They're almost exclusively carnivore. When they kill an animal, they eat the organs. It's crazy. They don't eat like us, the flaming you know. They're that. not even. <laughs> so you eat you eat organs, then you eat of course like you try to get fat like a ribeye, um, bone marrow, uh, grass fed meat, uh, free range eggs, like wild catch fish. And then if you're still hungry after you get uh, fruit, not no veggies, no fruit, no veggies, no, no pro processed food, right? So you, wait a minute. That's what I did. So you're eating mostly the organs? Yes. So yeah. what are we talking Trip, about? Trip, uh, heart, uh, liver, testicle, brain. You're eating all that? Yeah. Every, that's all you're eating every day? Yeah, every day I try to get like an uh, organ. Get but it's not, it's not a lot. It's uh, like maybe one gram or two gram. Oh, you get, you get that supermarket. In Canada, it's every super... It, you get the heart and the liver and everything. Cheap, it's cheap as hell because no nobody it. buys it. It's not part of our North, Afri yeah, North yeah. American culture. A liver, and it tastes like... you. And, and the the more you do it, the more you'll develop a taste for you. Like, really? It's an acquired taste. Yeah, now I love liver. Shut up. Now for my breakfast, for my breakfast, no. I'm, I'm doing liver eggs, eggs, bacon, uh, sausage, and I put a, a liver, like maybe the size of a... The size of like a cell phone yes like an iphone you put Shut up. 90 you put your oh, your your, uh, your your cup very very hot like 90 seconds 90 seconds thank you you eat it's delicious calf liver very very delicious is that good huh i love it i i mean I, at first it's, it was weird but i love it now yeah okay so we're talking intestines heart everything everything yeah
Yeah. And so you did this for how long? I've done that. I've done that for a month. The month of May. One month. And I took Recently. a picture on my Instagram, like to show that at last forty month. years. Last month. Yeah. One month. And okay. I took a picture to show that that yes. even at forty years old, it's possible. I was lean and shredded like I never been before. So imagine if I would have done that when I was like 30, <laughs> 25 years old, I would have been like, ah, you know? So one month, were you big? I mean, you weren't that big. You're still shredded. I, I lost, I think I lost maybe four pounds, four, yeah, three, you're still four shredded, pounds. But you got lean. You look bigger, but it's not that you're bigger. You, you lose water retention and inflammation because your skin is like really on the muscle. Yeah. Yeah. For a bodybuilder, I think it would be a good idea. Oh, wow. So and no vegetables. No vegetables. No. no leafy greens. No leafy green, no vegetable, nothing. Only animal base and uh, fruit. A, a, a little bit if you're still hungry after your meal. I gotta, I'll have to interview this guy to learn more about it. But what was the science that you're aware of behind not having leafy greens? And well, I've I've, uh, I've investigated a lot of uh, Paul Saladino's work. That's the carnivore MD guy. Yes, yeah. yes, and uh, you know it's a very controversial, yeah, controversial subject. You know. Yes. And I'm aware of it because I grew up like everybody else, I guess. Like my parents, hey, eat your vegetable. Yeah. Right? And I just, I'm just curious. I like to think outside the box. I like, I, you know, I like to break the rules, not break the law, but break the rules. And I think sometimes it's in order to improve in life, you need to do that. So I wanted to do something that everybody thought I was crazy, but now I've, now I, because I post that picture, everybody's like, what'd you do? No way, what the hell is it? People thought I was on steroid or something. You know, it's like, no, it's like I did that, that, that picture was taken three weeks after I was on that diet, you know? So only in three weeks, you know? So. I wonder what the photo looked like before. You still are shredded. No, no, I'm yeah. still, I'm still, sh but not as much as this. Wow. And it's not a lighting thing because wow. the guy who took a picture, it was like, it, it was, a, he had a real professional camera, but it was not like a lighting trick. What did your body fat get down to? Do you know? You know, I still don't I have no idea. no idea. I have no idea. Is that like, the as long as I feel healthy and, 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 I, and I feel good in my own skin, I don't. Now tell me about after the month, do you feel like you were sleeping better? Do you feel like you were clear of mind or were there side effects to this? I, I did not feel feel like that I was stronger or anything. I just feel I was just as strong. I felt a little bit that that I had less inflammation because when I train in, in martial art, there's a lot of impact and I feel like my body sometimes was hmm. not as damaged, I would say, right. than I would normally. You were, have, you're covering fast. Yes, and I also have a little bit of, uh, I would say, uh, arthritis and my big toes, one of my big toes, because I think earlier in, in my life, I, I kick, uh, uh, I must have kicked someone. Or, a turf toe or something, like yeah. that, jammed it. And yeah. sometimes when I'm laid down in bed, not when I'm moving, but when I'm laid down in bed, I feel, and it jammed. And, and, and yeah, I have this, too. during that month, when I did the diet, what, what? did not happen. No way. And now I'm back I'm no, to live normal, it, it's, it's back, back again. Shut yeah, up. so it's not a coincidence. It's not a coincidence. Yeah, like, I, I think a, it has something to do with inflammation. Uh, really? Yeah, yeah I had a, um, I played arena football. I'm not sure if you know what that is, but it's indoor football yeah. in America. And um, they play it in like a hockey rink, but they put like uh, AstroTurf down, like fake grass. Oh. And it's intense. There's walls. So it's kind of like hockey, but football. It's With crazy. the wall. With the wall. But they put they put pads on the walls, but it's still. Okay, okay. You're okay. still like diving. So like a it. hockey uh, wall. like yeah, they, yeah. They, yeah, yeah. But it's a pad, but it still hurts. Yeah. It's and you're big... falling down all the time on the, like there's a, concrete and then turf like a grass and i jammed my toe one time like stopping and just jammed it and it's always been had problems but uh never came back it's never the flexibility there's no flexibility i can barely bend it back but it, it's it, like i notice when i eat certain things like oh the pain's gone mm -hmm. and then other times the pain is back yeah i i uh however i do not know if i would eat vegetable Really? And and do uh, animal based diet and fruit with no processed food if I would have the same result. I mean, maybe it's just a fact because I stopped the processed food. Mm, food, right? It may not be the. You might maybe, have vegetables and fruit. And make according fun too. to certain people, but Paul Paul Sellers no believe it's that's the right way to eat. It's no vegetable he, he, because he believe I, I. I mean, you can research him, but he, he strongly believe I that any uh, living organism develop a defense mechanism mm. to survive and vegetable, uh, when you eat them, they, they make you have inflammation and all kinds of different issues. So what they do to defend themselves is to create a <clears throat> allergic reaction. Mm. And also they create fruit in order like a bait, 
for an animal to eat the food instead of eating the, the plant so it protect themselves. What about, have you heard about the blue zones? The blue zones are the, I think there's seven blue zones in the world, which are areas of the world, regions of the world that have people that live the longest. Like mm. they live over a hundred. And so there are these seven places. There's one here in uh, Loma Linda, which is about an hour and a half away from Los Angeles. There's one in like somewhere in Japan. And there's these seven, I think it's seven zones. And I've heard that they mostly have like plant-based, plant-based diets yeah. with like some fish. Yeah. Mostly. But that, that wouldn't make sense. There might be other environmental things. Like they have a good sense of community. There's like all these factors. They have a good sense of family, community. Yeah. They're like, they have a sense of purpose. All these other things that help them live longer. Yeah. But um, I, 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 if you knows? look at nature, that makes sense because if you look at nature, the animals that are the more, I mean, I would say more rip normally is a carnivore, but they don't live as long as the herbivore. Herbivore, really? like the turtle, the, I mean, might not Even be true. Be, and gorilla, gorilla eats is, plants, right? Ex- exactly. And that thing is shredded. Yeah, yeah. But if you look like, a, like, a, like most of the predatory animals are. I don't think they, they live as long, long as the air, a certain herbivore. I mean, I, I mean, maybe the Greenland uh, shark. I think he's a. I'm not sure if he's a carnivore animal, but I know he lives like 500 years or something. Maybe I'm wrong in that, wow. but uh, it would be worth to investigate. Yeah, I want to learn more about. So that. that makes sense if you say that most Who human. Knows? Yeah, that could be. That could be. I think we don't. It's. It's not been long enough that we. I know, that we study it. this stuff. I know. Need, we need more. There's data. other factors too. There's other environmental factors. The weather. The community. The, all these things. The stress. The, the stress. The, the, they're not stressed. Yeah. They need purpose. You know. Absolutely. They, absolutely. absolutely. But you, when you watch a nature documentary of a lion eating a deer or something, it's going right for the, yeah. the intestines. A, a hyena, same thing. They, when an animal is dead, they don't know how to kill, but they know how to eat. So they right. go for the testicle, for the, 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 crazy, the gut. It? Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Is that just because that's where the most nutrients are? That's in? right. That's why. That's why. Over like the arm or the leg or whatever, it's like no. The the nutrient are it's it's more. There is more nutrient nutrient in in those uh, those part in the organs. That's right. <laughs> so, so what is your? So you just turned happy birthday, by the way, because you just turned forty like a couple weeks ago, right? Yeah, like, May nineteen. It's crazy, man. Uh, you look your best you've ever looked. I try. So what's I, what's you. what's your diet now that you've been testing these things? Intermittent fasting, yeah. this carnivore style diet. You've trained like a machine for so long. What is your diet? and workout routine going to look like moving forward from 40 to 50? What's your vision? Is it still experimentation? Is it train hard? Is it uh, yoga I'm, and relax? <laughs> like what's the- <laughs> I'm in a constant phase of learning, but there is certain things that I experiment that I will keep with me mm. forever. For example, eating organs is something that I'm still doing now. However, I, I loosen up on my diet. I like mm. chocolate. I'll eat chocolate. Yeah. I live my life to the fullest. Yeah. I like coffee. I stopped coffee for that period of time, but now I like coffee. I am yeah, back it's on it. Sip. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> one thing that I do too that um, most people think I'm crazy, and I think that's one of the things that contribute to try to make me fit and live long and contribute to my athleticism is um, I like ice bath. They're so good. Uh, I, I have them. it at home. Uh, three to four times a week. So the first thing I do when I wake up in the morning, I go in a ice bath. And when I say ice, it's titanic cold water. And when I am in, when I'm, why How I, long? Uh, it depends the temperature of the water. In yeah. the in the winter, it's much colder. <laughs> when, I, when I'm doing it in the summer, I need to put ice in it, right, but right, it, right. it doesn't go down as, as low as it is when it was. The it winter, is. it's like 20 degrees in the water. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, uh, the, the water actually in the, and when I do it in the in the um, in the winter, it's, it goes maybe four degrees. Four like degrees, right, right over the the You're Fahrenheit. Three, yeah, for, for, Celsius. For, Celsius. Uh, so it's, it's like thirty-five degrees Fahrenheit or something. Yeah, yeah, it's forty. It's about a freezing four, point. Forty, yeah, forty, yeah, yeah, yeah forty. Degrees. That's mean it's that's yeah, freeze. it's about five. That's, yeah, that's, that's right. So, so the, the reason why I'm doing this is also therapeutic. Yes. What it does is, yeah, I believe it helps to boost my. I believe. I mean, there is no real stuff, strong data. Well, there is data it. now. I mean, there are cold chuck protein and hot yes, chuck protein yes, with sauna. Yeah. But what I'm saying, I believe it helped boost my immune system. I believe it helps me with inflammation. I'm yeah. talking just personal you, experience. Yes. And also, it helps with my mood. The reason why it does is I'm forcing myself 
to find comfort in a very extreme, uncomfortable yes. situation. So hard. And I believe in life pleasure, it's also related to a relief of pain. And and, and, and all done that thought, and I'm gonna yeah. explain my point if people are not I agree with that. So the fact that I'm in I find comfort in a very extremely uncomfortable situation when I'm in the cold water forcing myself to breathe by the nose. Mm. When I get out of it, I don't stay too long because of course you'll die of hypothermia. Yeah. When I get out of it, it makes me feel better in my own skin. Example of that to make an analogy for everybody to to understand is, let's say we go eat a meal, the same meal together. We eat the same dish. You eat maybe your breakfast or your dinner, but I haven't eat for five days because when we eat the meal, because of what I've done, my meal will taste much better than right. yours. Yeah. Because I was in pain, so so it's a relief of pain. The same thing that I'm trying to do with the ice bath. I try to put myself in a very extreme situation to force me to find some kind of comfort to mm. resist. Then when I get out, I'm like, wow, and I feel so good. It's mm. very therapeutic. Yeah, it's very therapeutic. Uh, have you heard of Wim Hof? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I'm I, doing. I'm doing this as well. Yeah. Have you done with Wim? I'm, I went to Poland last year. I took a group of guys to go with. Wim, we spent five days with Wim, just ourselves. No way! A bunch of influencers, former pro athletes and hockey player and NFL guys and former champions. And we went for five days together just as us guys. And we dove in the freezing river. We climbed a mountain in snow with no, <laughs> no clothes on. You did this? Right? Yes. Ah! We were in the ice tub for 10 minutes. We're, it's crazy, man. And it was an incredible experience. Yeah. And as a football player, I used to have ice tubs after practice for 10 minutes after practice. But it wasn't this cold ever. It was just, it was cold. But, yeah. it wasn't, but this was another level. And it just continued. I, I'm a big believer in putting yourself through structured pain on yeah. a daily basis. Even if it's two minutes. Even if it's something where it's an ice bath, it's push-ups, it's whatever you got to do. Something that's uncomfortable. Yeah. It sounds like you've been doing this for a long time. Yeah. But uh, have you met Wim yet? I never did. Oh, uh, I got to connect you guys because he's, I think he might be in town right now. Wow. How really? long are you here for? I'm leaving tomorrow. Uh, okay. Well, next time you're back, I'll yeah. have to connect oh, you guys. God, man. Or if you go to Poland, I'll have, I'll set you up with like a private session with him. He's unbelievable. He's probably more extreme than you. Really? Oh, yeah, for sure. And I mean, I see stuff that he does. It's insane. But, but I like the, you know, he, he claims that he believes the, the body can learn how to heal it's, heal itself. itself. And, and he's I know. He's injected. Yeah, yeah, and maybe. then resisted it from his mind That's and right. the cold. And and also, I, I believe it's, it's 14 of his students have done the same thing yes. so versus 14 him. other subjects that were not trained to his, right. his methods and the result data was like... The uh, same, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Crazy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's climbed like Mount Kilimanjaro or something with like no clothes, yeah. like just shorts. I think we underestimate the power of the mind and uh, we, we just start touching it. And... and uh, I'm a big fan of Ma Matthew Walker too. The oh, the sleep guy. Yes, I'm supposed to have him on soon. Too, and yeah. um, he talks about uh, we talk about that subject. So he talks about meditation, and he yeah. says that at first, when he when he heard of the idea of meditation to help someone to sleep, he he, he kind of rejected. But mm. he knows now that the data That's proves huge. that it can help. Like so, the the brain has a has a strong influence of of, yeah. of the body. Do you meditate body. a lot? Well, what I do is when I'm in this cold water you extreme environment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so what I do is I try to force myself, close my eyes, force myself, and breathe by the nose. So, mm. so it, it put me in some kinds of meditation because it helped me to find to find peace and calm in a very extreme environment. So it's some kind of meditation, but I do not spend like half an hour. Yeah, and I, yeah. I do it for a few minutes and then I go on with my day. Speaking of breathing, did you learn how to breathe properly growing up as a fighter? And did they teach you this in martial arts? And they, because they, breathing is everything in competition, any sport. If you don't have your breath under control, you're screwed. You're tired. Yeah. Did you learn this early on or did you learn it? I've learned the technique, but I didn't know why. Hmm. And now I've read... I've read books and I, I've, and now you're like, oh, I know, I why. know why, so and it what, makes sense. What did you learn that was effective for you to stay relaxed under extreme tension yeah. and not burn out? So let's say you you do a a crazy uh, 
physical activity or that you, 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 you're ex exhausted and you, you're out of breath, the worst thing you can do is, is bend over and <laughs> breathe by the mouth. So you take a, take a straw, for example, and try to make the air go. If you bend it, it will, it will not go mm -hmm. through. So, so you try to stand up straight. And we call it in karate, in Kyokushin karate, it's called ibuki. It's, it's a breathing. So we used to do an exercise after, uh, let's say, a fight, a fight when I was young. And I, I always wonder why it was making us do that. But I knew it was helping me recover, recover very fast. So you, you, you stand up straight, you're exhausted. So you go, you take big, big inhale by the nose and yeah. exhale by the nose. And it's like you're trying to hyperventilate yourself. But you, mm. you exhale, you inhale. Long inhale and very quick exhale, but very powerful. Can you show, and what me, it does, can you show me an example? Yeah. Can you so, show me example? yeah. So, <laughs> I go like this. It's called Ibuki. It's okay. in karate. So, it's a little bit like him, but I used to do that when I was a kid. Yeah. And I didn't know why. I knew it was working well, uh -huh. but I didn't know the why. I know how to do it, but I didn't know the why. Now I know the, now the why. why. And the I'll tell you why. why. Yes. Right. Is, so, it, is he in camera? Is he in frame still? Just somewhere? Okay, cool, yeah. So Ibuki is this. So you go like this, you go, you go, you can do like five to 10 to 30, yes. depend. We used to do, like I was a kid, we used to do five. <clears throat> wow. Then you hold it you hold as it, long yeah. as you can. Then when you're ready, then that's the first cycle. Then you do three cycles. Wow. You do that in between rounds. So when I go fight in MMA, that's awesome. When I go fight in MMA and I sit down on the stool, you would do I, that. I didn't do the movement, but I you're inhale, bright the nose. I'm doing the same. I'm doing very often that. If I needed it, I'm doing it. And and help. Or most me. guys are like. Yes. They're like because sucking to the mouth. They're panicking. They're panicking. Wow. And the reason why you, you it's better to inhale by the uh, nose from what I've understood when, when I've, I've the read The science it. of it, yeah. Yes, and it goes through the nose. It goes over your eye and right in the brain. And there's a filter in here. If you breathe by the mouth, it doesn't go through the same, mm -hmm. uh, the same part. Yeah. And I thought it was very interesting. We, we have a nose and, and a nose is like a hearing if it, if you don't use it, it will close a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like a hair, like a woman, they put earring, you know, like very often. So, so it, it closed down after you take it off for too long, your hair will close down. Yeah. But if you want to keep it open, you need to exercise it or, or breathe. Some some people are mouth breather. I think it's very bad. Have you read the book by James Nestor? James Nestor, that's right. That's it's, the called, one. it's called breathing. Yeah, the right? art, the art of uh, lo the lost heart of breathing. That's crazy, yeah, isn't it's it? Fascinating. We yeah. had a man who was talking about this how. Even the jaw changes when you breathe through the mouth all the time. Mm -hmm. Like you, your face will change. Yes, and he explained that's that's what I, that's what I'm talking about. He explained that it goes over your it yes. goes in the brain. Yeah. It oxygenate your the brain bo and the body. It's good for antidepressing. Yes. Uh, it change your behavior and everything. So I thought it was very fascinating data, you know. And wow. I, I and I did it a long time ago, but I didn't know why. But I used to do it still. But, but, but now I know the why. Your teacher taught you this earlier. Yes, on. a long time ago. And I think it's been transmitted through karate, through martial arts, through generation. And I don't even know if they know why. They know it works because it makes people, you know, but they don't know why. Now we know the why. The science behind huh? it. What's something that you've done your whole life through training that you still don't know the why it works? Like this. Oh, and, and there's, ma there's many things. We talk about breathing. There's another thing about breathing, like if I may. Yeah, yeah. When you breathe, a lot of people, they breathe to here. You wanna... Like, if, if I may put your, your, put your hand here. Yeah. yeah. You feel it in the back yeah. here? Yeah, expanding. So it expands. So it, it, your lungs are like a bag. It goes uh -huh. all the way down. If you never use it, you always use maybe one third of your, your chest up here. Yes. So you don't fully wow. oxygenate yourself. Wow. So and and the oxygen does on, on not only goes into your lung. It goes in your every, everywhere in your body. But you were taught this early on. You didn't know why it was. I didn't know why. working. You were just like I'm doing. You're practicing every exactly, day. Exactly. Exactly. And I'm glad that I had. I, you know, we talk about. 
the reason why some people are successful and not, and we, we don't know all the, always mm -hmm. the why, the cause. I believe in cause and effect. I believe, I personally believe in causality and determinism. I do mm -hmm. not believe in like, in, the, in a free will in a way, because by definition, if there is a cause, there is, I mean, I, I still don't know, but I believe the fact that I had that technique when I was young could have a huge influence on, huge. on my- Everything. Yeah. For decades. This is one example that over. now I know the why, but how much, how many things like this that I'm not aware of that happen wow. in every day, you know, for everybody, you know? That's why teaching and being educated the right way early on could transform your life. That's right. Usain Bolt is the fastest man in the world. How many guys like Usain Bolt there is in the world, like perhaps even more talented than him, but maybe they didn't have the same uh, path. Yeah, exactly. So I, I, you know, it's fascinating. How do you, you seem like one of the most mentally determined individuals. I mean, you are obsessive with training, with learning with mastering things and with putting yourself through pain and hard work consistently. How do you make sure that you never negotiate with your mind to do less than what you really want to do in order for you to be successful? How do you not say, oh, I'm tired today, so I'm going to negotiate with myself and take the day off? Like, how do you like, be so determined with your mind, no matter what is happening in your world, pain, stress, family, like you are committed all in on, on what you need to do. I think it's, I mean, it could, I never been diagnosed <laughs> to be a, uh, excessive compulsive. I just think I am, yeah. but I never been diagnosed. Sure. I can live in society with no problem. I'm not the kind of guy who opened the door at the time. I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. but I have my own mental issues and, and stuff as stupid as when I drill a technique, if you talk to my training partner, I drill the same amount of time on the left side than on the right side. Oh. And, Equal. And I have some guys Ten sometimes times. that I drill with, they're like, hey, I don't want to do this shit, you know? Like, like, and I'm like, no, no, no. And they, they think like, yeah, he's got issues up here. Like maybe I do issues, but these issues maybe made me the, yeah. the success, made the success that I have. Sure. So it could be a bad thing in terms of how you live through society if you, if you, right. if you, it makes you go crazy to have a weird behavior towards other people, but it could be a good thing. In my in my case, I try to take that and put it into my field of work. In your creation, yeah. But become sometimes become an obsession. Yeah. So you you try to. Do you to, think? Do you like think, when I play basketball, just an example. When I play basketball and I look at the alarm clock, oh, I gotta go. I need to do a free shot, a free throw, and get it in. I cannot leave the court. Until you, if yeah. I do not get my free throw. Okay. Otherwise, I don't know. I know it sounds completely preposterous to everybody. And it is, it is. But I have this impression that if I don't do that, my it will ruin my day. I know it sounds crazy. You'll I think know. about it and you'll never. Yeah, yeah, this is not normal. This is insane. <laughs> no, no, but you know what I mean? That's yeah, how right. crazy I am. People think I'm a normal guy. I'm not, I'm not like I'm nuts. I, I'm, everybody is, has their own issue, but that's one of the things I have in the, in, on the mental. Do you think anyone can be Number one, and what they do in the world without being insane a little bit, without being a little crazy, without being obsessive. Like you can't be number one at something. You yeah. can be great, yeah. but to be number one consistently, you gotta obsess over something for a while. Yeah, perhaps if you dig into these individual lives, you'll find some pattern that like, hey, whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa this guy's got <laughs> issues, you know? Or, oh yeah, I mean, it's not really an issues, but it serves him well, but he's not normal. Yeah. And what is normal? What right. normal is just to compare to the the norm, the the, yeah. the norm, the I mean the average. I mean, what is the word normal is a word that we made we made we made it up. You know what I mean? It's yeah. uh yeah, maybe no, nobody is normal. Right. You know what I mean? Right, right. When do you feel the most loved? When you're doing something, when you're around certain people, when do you feel the most when you're accomplishing what when do you feel love the most? I gotta tell you the truth. Yes. I, the most love is as good as my career was. I, I was very happy with what I've done. It's nothing compared to my life. You know, like, like my, 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 my career is, is, is great. I did great thing, but my personal life, feel, I feel mm. very lucky. And this is the most important thing for me. 
in order to maintain that, I, I keep all the extraction away from it, mm -hmm. you know, to protect it. But I think this is my core. This mm. is what makes me an happy person, you know. Yeah. This is the most important thing, and that's where I feel the most love. That's beautiful. Yeah. The moments where people aren't seeing you performing and being yes. in movies and training and competing. That's where I feel really? the most love, yes. I... Um, I really enjoy what I do. I, I right now it's only fun stuff. All my the stuff that I do not like to do, it's in the past. Really, and I'm I, I'm <laughs> very that... lucky. I'm very lucky. I mean, there's no perfect job, you know. Right. Like, but I'm I feel very lucky and very privileged uh, to have had the 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 adventure of life that I have. Yes, and especially now, I mean, it's it's only fun stuff ahead of me, and and I have the the opportunity now to do things, only things that I, you know, I want to do, to, that I want to do with people that I want to do. And, yeah. and, and I am here today with you. I'm, I'm very happy to be here. I and I wanted it. to be here with you. <laughs> and, and it's great. It's fun. I didn't come because I had to, because right. I want to. Yeah. And that's, that's the difference now. I, I, even in business, I, when you start in mixed martial art, it's, uh, there's not a lot of money and you take what especially what, what 15 years yeah. ago when you were getting into it right it's like yeah. you take whatever it comes you make what like 20 grand a fight or 50 grand oh, a my fight with your my, first my, few my first fight i made a uh, thousand three hundred dollar because my opponent did not make weight so i gained 30 percent of his purse oh my God. a thousand three hundred dollar that, that, was that, that was in the ufc though that wasn't the in ufc i'll tell you i'm not a, i'm not i'm yeah, not yeah. shy in UFC, my first fight, I did 3,000 to show, 3,000 to win. My first UFC world title, I did 9,000 to no, show, 9,000, and I didn't win. So I only did 9,000 9, against Matthews. I got on bar. I, get, I did 9,000. That's how oh. it was back then. So when what, we what had was, an opportunity oh to gosh. take money, we took from him everything. But now, <laughs> now the good thing is I have my health which is the most important, I have my wealth. So I do not associate myself with something that I don't like. I, I need to be authentic and I'm, yes. and I'm lucky that I reached that point in my life in terms of, of uh, autonomy, in terms of, of, of wealth. Yeah, freedom. And I yeah. wish it to everybody, especially in MMA, but in MMA, oh, it's not like other sport, there's no guideline. Basketball, Baseball. soccer. You go in a in a school program. They take they take they take you. They will show you the guy. Like in MMA, it's 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 a world of shark. It's crazy. Like I lost so much money, but I made a lot. Thanks. I'm so happy. But through my journey, I like I was lucky, but I lost a lot of bad luck happened to me. But just what I'm saying is, it's a it's a crazy sport. And very often, I have parents coming to me with their kids. They're like. Hey, George, this is my son, the future world champion. Do you have any advice for him? Like, get out I, look, of <laughs> I look at the kid, I tell him, I say, you go to school? He's like, yeah. He's like, good, man. Stay at school. It's very important for wow. you. It should be your number one priority. And the parent always look, give me a weird look when I say that. And it's not because I made it. I'm going to tell your kid to do it because the chance that you, 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 you have success, the odds are very low. So small. And I know me because I we only talk about the one who make it. But I know the truth because I've been, the, I've been there, I've seen it. One of the happiest places in my life and one of the saddest places to go, it's in the gym. Because when I go there, it's happy because I go train, I go do what I love to do. One of the saddest places to, to be also because after the training, there's always some people that come to me and say, hey, can you give me some advice about this? I give them some advice, it's always technique related. But the real advice for me would be like, hey man, Get out You're 35 years old, bro. What are you doing like, here? It's been three losses in a row. Get out of here. It should have got out 10 years ago, by the way. I know you're not going to make it. So when I tell the kid this, mm. I, say, I say stay at school. The reason is if he put all his eggs in the same basket to do a sport, and I'm talking about soccer, hockey, baseball, not only fighting, everything. And then he reached the age of 28 years old, 30 years old, and he, he doesn't make it. It's too late. There's nothing that he can fall back into. At least if he goes to school, even though even he doesn't know what to do, at least it, it's a grind. Yeah. He will get his diploma. At least he has something. It's an assurance. Yeah. I chose fighting not because I didn't have choice. I had, I went to school. I, I just I I stopped school 
when I had my first title shot. People don't know that because really? it's a stereotype in University fighting. University or were you in college? Yes, I was in kinesiology. Yeah. People don't know that. But like any every other kid, I didn't like what Who I didn't. School? I didn't know yeah. what, what to do. I didn't know what to do. I was lost because yeah. it's normal. You're you're not the same person at 15 that no. you will be at 20 and 25. You'll change. But stay there, stay, keep the grind. Mm. Maybe one day something will happen to you and boom, that's what I want to become. That's what I want to go. Now you will orient yourself towards that. But if you do not stay there and you only put your eggs in the same basket, mm. especially in sport, maybe you get hit by a car. Maybe you're not good enough. You won't right. make it. You have nothing. So that's why, that's the reason why I tell the kid because I've seen this movie in the gym when I see my training partner. Times. It's a really bad ending. And I don't wish that for any kid. Mm. Try to make it. If you want to be a professional athlete, try to make it. Make it big. You know, dream big. The problem is not to to aim uh, high and never make it. It's to aim too low. But mm. but at least go to school. It's very yeah. important. Get your 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 assurance. Have other least. skills as well. Yeah, learn other skills. Learn other things yes. that you can use in your yes. life, not just only one thing. That's a problem with a lot of uh, a lot of young generation now. Yeah. So I see it every day when I go to the gym. It's very, it's very sad. It's very, very sad. And, and if I would tell them the truth, they will say I'm cocky. They, they will be insulted. Right. I've told my real friend. I tell them. Some of my friends, they listen to me. They rearrange the, really? re 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 their life. Training, training partners, like guys yes. who are actually fighting. I tell or, because yeah. I care about them. I, 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 I know I said, it's not going to work, bro. It's like I'm telling you the truth. It's not going to work. And, and it's, it was, it's painful to say for me as well, because I see their pain, their mm. dream is shattered. Mm. But some other people I see, they never listen to me. They, they don't like, they keep doing and they're gonna, they're gonna hit the wall and they're gonna, oh, I should have, it's too late, man, because you wait too long. Now you, it's, you have nothing that you, fo you can fall back on. Right. Do you yeah. feel like you left the sport at the right time for you? Yes, a lot of guys, they stay too long in here. And it's unfortunate because a lot of these guys, a lot of them are legend, but because they stay too long, it, it damaged their legacy. And mm. we forget how good they were when they used to compete at, in their prime. And everybody compete for different reasons. Yeah. I competed personally to become the best in the world because I wanted to have my life, my, my dream life, my freedom but I didn't want nothing less than being the best and the champion. Right, so you weren't gonna if keep Number fighting. two, I, 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 it's, done. I don't want to be number two, I want to be number one. Right. But if you compete, if you still compete because you like to fight and perhaps it's a good choice, but me, that's the reason why I do not compete because I'm 40 years old, I came to the realization, which is very hard to accept by the way that- Very hard. Man, I think my best years are behind me. Oh, oh I man. hate to say it, but well, it's true. The best fighting years. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The, the Not, best of the, the rest of the years are, are there. They're here, they're coming, man. That's right. That's Movies, right. opportunities, friends, family, whatever you want to write, businesses, right. all the, the the rewards now can come from this. I, I'm, I'm Look not, at George Foreman. Yeah. He had fighting, but then like, okay, he kept blowing up that's afterwards. Right. So. His barbecue. And Absolutely. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, so smart. What's the, you know, the poutine uh, machine that you can sell in, in Quebec, you know? <laughs> that, that problem is if you're, if you're, if you're amongst the, the best and the best and you retire right on time, mm. your stock is high. So high. The, the doors open on a new Everything. level of different business. If you retire when you, 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 you're on many a, a set of losses, now your stock is low. You, when you retire, the door are closed. Mm. So it, it's, an, it's, a, it's also about business and opportunity. I think you close the door for yourself if you yeah. do so, on top of having damage and physical injuries. Yeah, it's very sad to, you know. Did you ever wish you would have done one more fight or you like, okay. There's one. always the idea behind <sighs> my head, oh, if I would have fight Khabib, if I would have, you know, and this, really? and, and, and it did not happen. And maybe I'm glad that it didn't, didn't happen. You never yeah. fought McGregor, right? Or Khabib, those never, are different no. weight classes? That was, Khabib was one of the fights that would have come back at the time, not now because it now is done, but at the time we tried to make it, UFC said they, they added a plan for Khabib. And now oh, up man. to recently, you know, you know my, my days of competition Competing to be the strongest man and to prove I'm the the, the best, strongest man in yeah. the world is done because I, I I believe my best are behind me. However, I'm an entertainer. I'm in the entertainment business. <laughs> so would you fight again? If I do fight, it would be maybe an exhibition for a novelty fight. And I got a proposition not a long time ago to fight Oscar De La Hoya in a, in boxing? a fight. Yeah, boxing. Eight round with bigger gloves on two minute rounds, and I would have done it not because I believe I'm a better 
boxer than Oscar was in his prime because I think the fact that I'm heavier than Oscar, younger. I'm younger, and yeah. maybe I think he has perhaps more mileage than me, it would have made an even fight. And I would have done it because a big purse, big paycheck, a big, big paycheck and also the, the big, a big, uh, big money would have been given to charity. Because I, I request that to, when I was on the phone with Oscar and Mr. Khan of Thriller, to show that we don't take ourselves too seriously. Right, I think right. there is room for entertainment and that. Yeah. To, to. Now, there, there, is, there is certain fighting promotion that want to find out who's the best man in that, like in boxing or in MMA. Mm -hmm. But there are also other promotion that want to, they make entertainment and say this celebrity versus this yeah. celebrity and people are curious and want to see what happened. Yeah. I think there is room for Absolutely. both to exist. What do you think? I've had um, both Logan and Jake Paul on the show who are friends of mine from Ohio. Mm -hmm. I'm from Ohio. Um, What's your thoughts on both of those guys entering this world, training, fighting, winning? Great, great business, great business guy, man. Yeah, and, yeah. and they, they, they're very opportunist. They, they, they serve the wave. They take advantage of, of, the, of the world that we live in and in social media. And people who are jealous and say, "Oh, they're not real fight," it's because they're jealous. They not, they not have as much money. And I think it's hypocrite because. I'm sure if they would be in the same situation as these guys, they would, they would have done the same thing. Absolutely. They would have done the same thing. So I'm, I'm not a, a, a Paul, a Logan and Jake Paul haters. Yeah. I think I admire these guys. They, they're very smart. I, and I watched the fight against uh, Mayweather. Yeah, because I was curious. What did you I think, I think he did great. I think <laughs> no, he did for three fantastic. years fighting, it's pretty good. Yeah, I think he did great, and I think it was a good show. It's wow. all about entertainment. Of course, uh, Mayweather is not the same Mayweather than he was, and perhaps he did not maybe prepare himself as, as right. good as he yeah. would if he would have fought the Pacquiao in his prime. But it was great. I had yeah. fun watching yeah, it, yeah. Yeah. and would, I enjoyed it. Would you fight one of those guys for the right purse? I would more, because who I am, uh, I would maybe more... I fight more like a, like a like legend. A for me, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oscar De La Hoya is my second favorite boxer of all time behind Sugar Ray Leonard. So oh, that'd be cool. So for me, it would have been cool at 70 years old to look back in my life and say, hey, I fought him. Yeah. I fought that guy. But Dana, Dana White uh, stopped it. He didn't want me to do it because really? I'm still under contract with UFC. Still? Yeah, because I retired. And uh, even when you retire, I didn't finish my fight contract. Even if when you retire, you're fighting five years after you retire, you're still in contract. And and people will say, why don't you fight it in court? It's not MMA, it's boxing. I know, I, I just don't want to have a headache uh, and hire stress. lawyers yeah. to go in court and be the bad guy. So what I do is I let uh, Triller and UFC taking care of their business. And maybe if it works one day, Cool. I'll be in. Wow. But if it doesn't work now, right now it does not work. So maybe we'll see what's gonna That'd happen. It'll be a fun fight to watch. It would be a fun fight. But I How know Oscar, he? Oscar, and, and Dana hate each other. They hate each other. So we need someone to bridge the gap, perhaps. How old is Oscar now? I think he's forty-eight. Oh really? It's yeah. Like so now I knew I was going maybe to fight him. I started studying his video and everything. I was like going like crazy in the same mood mode than when Man. I'm fighting. What about like Mike Tyson? Mike Tyson, I think he might be would you, fifty. Yeah. Would you fight him? No, 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 Mike Tyson, no. no. It, it's, it's like a different thing. He's I think big, Tyson is heavyweight. I yeah, think. he's a big guy too, yeah. Yeah, maybe not now, maybe not now, but, but Oscar would be... It would be fun. Because he's like the golden boy of boxing. I was like the nice guy of MMA. Oh. I think he would have made, and we give a, a purse to, a big purse to charity. charity. I think it would have been, it would be have been a, a fun event. You think it would still happen, maybe? It's a possibility. I think there's a chance that it happened. Oh, yeah. I gotta I come think, watch that I think there's a sure. chance that it happened, but uh, right it. now there's... Uh, problems that need to be solved in order for that to happen. I got a few final questions. Does that work for you? Couple yeah, absolutely. Questions. This has been inspiring, man. I'm so glad that you've been opening up like this. Um, for people who, for people in the world who are not extreme fighters and not in your field, but they have a lot of challenges that come to them: relationships, career, health uh, challenges, just whatever. The pandemic. They have challenges that come to them. How do you think people should prepare? for tough challenges, for pain that's coming their way. What's the best way to prepare for pain? Uh, to prepare for a challenge, sometimes time restrict you in terms of your preparation because you might not be qualified to face certain problems. And I think you need to build a team of people that are qualified, but also people that you can trust. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. For example, when I started making money in my career, I was facing a big challenge because I was paid in US, but my structure was never, like I never did that before. Mm. So what I did is I didn't try to make my, my tax report myself. I hire mm. someone that is that I, that I first could trust and I know is qualified to take mm -hmm. care of that problem. So I think one thing I was good in my career is to, to build a team. Mm -hmm. And I think it, 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 if you're facing a challenge that mm -hmm. is overwhelming, overwhelming you and you need help in order to face that challenge, I think you need to build a team of people that are qualified mm -hmm. and also that you can trust. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have these two things, it's, it, it could be very damageable. Yeah. You can build some, you can hire, hire someone that is qualified, but you do not trust, he's gonna maybe take advantage of you. And if he's, if you can trust, you hire a friend, but he, he's not qualified, <laughs> you're going, no, right, you're like, it's yeah. just as bad, you know? Yeah. So you need both. So you need both. Quali trust. Qualify and, yeah. and, 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 uh, and trust, yeah. Do you see a lot of fighters who just have people in their corner that they trust, that they're like they're they're homeboys or whatever, they're friends, but they're not qualified, and Tons. it just ruins their career. Tons, or, really. Tons, and and it it affects their career because the career of an athlete is, it, and a career of a person, not only an athlete, it's not a straight line. Career is a, it's a long, it's a marathon, not a sprint, and and sometimes there's failure that you need to come back. There's a victory. There's something that you learned, but you lost, and this and that. It, it's not a straight line. So building a, your team is very important, yeah. I believe. Inspiring, man. Uh, okay, you've got a, a new movie out. It's uh, on. It's called Marvel's The Falcon. Yeah, it's and a the series. Winter Soldier. It's yeah. a series. You play the bad guy. I'm excited to watch this. This is gonna be <laughs> fun, man. I'm super excited. Uh, Kai, our producer, said it was amazing, and he was like, "You were awesome in it." So I'm excited <laughs> to watch this. It's on Disney Plus right now, right? Yes, it's on Disney Plus. It's. Um I'm very lucky because after I retired, I had a call from Disney. They want me to reprise my role of uh, the Winter Soldier. Yeah. Uh, and the Winter Soldier, it's a movie. Uh, I fought. I, I have a fight with uh, Captain America. That's he, awesome, he, be man. he beat me That's up, so but cool. I, I survived. I That's ran so away. cool. <laughs> <laughs> so they wanted me to play the same character in the series, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So um, I said yes, and and. I've done some some gig in the past in acting, but I was not focusing on it because I was too busy training, uh, training for a fight. It was life threatening, so I was training for a fight. Now the, it's only fun, fun stuff. Fun. So I'm still training, but I'm focusing on acting full time. It's been really? two years that I'm focusing. I'm having a theater class, camera classes, wow. uh, English classes, uh, audition classes, because these are like an MMA. You have a jujitsu coach and Muay Thai mm -hmm. coach, a karate coach, a rest, like it's very specialized. And in order to improve, you need to sh learn every speci specialization in order to, and yeah. you need to get out of your comfort zone. So I know I'm always gonna be choose for an action figure yeah. in, in a movie. Fighting and doing something. Of course, because of my background. But when I do train, I get out of my comfort zone. I play a uh, uh, drama script, a uh, romantic uh, script, a uh, uh, comedy. Oh. So I'm not playing an action figure, so it's important. That's cool, man. Yeah. Are you enjoying it? I really enjoyed it. It's a lot of fun, and I have a because the 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 background I have, I'm very lucky and, and privileged uh, because uh, I have a lot of project coming. Uh, so yeah. I'm very happy. It's, you got a lot of stuff in the pipeline coming now. Yes, That's yes, amazing, yes. Man. But you know, in movies, it's always in uncertain because they need to find budget yes, and all that. Course, but there, there's a lot of stuff. I'm very happy that Disney gave me that opportunity. That's amazing, man. I'm excited to watch it. And uh, I want everyone else to watch it on Disney Plus. It's called The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Um, and a lot of fight scenes that you're into. There's a lot of fight I'm scenes, so and, pumped, and the fight scene are. You don't like, stunt man either, dude. The stunt men are incredible. Do you have my, a stunt man too? I, I've done some of my stunt, but not every wow. every of every of my stunt. You're not like, jumping off buildings yourself. No, you're, like but you're the, doing the fighting scenes. Nah, but they, these guys are a different level. They the they make me look bad in a way. Really? Like oh, they're they're incredible. Like. To be a martial artist, I think there is three different major uh, dimension. There is the fighters, like I did throughout my career, like the timing and everything. I'm a I'm a fighter. There is the um, the, the the choreography, like the the, the forms, yes. the, the stunt people that you see in movies, and there's also the philosophy. Like mm -hmm. I would say, Bruce Lee. Yes. Bruce Lee was known mostly for his philosophy. Maybe I know he was perhaps able to defend himself for sure 
if we would be a, a good enough to put in UFC, I don't know when I, maybe I don't think so, but, but in terms of philosophy, his philosophy changed my life. Like mm. stuff that he says, like it's incredible. Like, like use your longest weapon against his nearest point. It's still stuff that we do in MMA. Really? And we, yeah, yeah, it's crazy. He was ahead of his time. And in movies, we talk about choreography. These guys, the, the stunt people, are just on a different level than wow. what they do. They are martial artists. They can defend themselves, all on, but they specialize in stunt. It's just unbelievable. And they make me look good, like very really? good, they, because they, they do stuff. Like I can do certain things, but stuff that they do on the concrete, it's right. different level. I needed them in order to, to, to make it to the next level. That's yeah. cool, man. That's exciting. Well, it's cool that you're learning and you're challenging yourself. Uh, this is a question I, I ask everyone at the end. It's called the three truths. Um, so I'd like you to imagine a hypothetical scenario. It's your last day on earth many years away from now. You get to live as old as you want to live, but then eventually you got to turn the lights off. And you've accomplished every dream. Everything you want to accomplish, healthy, happy, family's good, it all happens. But for whatever reason, you've got to take all of your work with you. This interview, you got to take it with you. All the videos of your content from your fights, the movies, the shows, it all goes with you to the next place. So no one has access to your information anymore. Okay. But you get a piece of paper and a pen, and you get to write down three things you know to be true that you would share with the world. Three lessons that this is all we would have from you. What would you say are those three truths for you? My God, you, you, you're... Uh... Getting deep, I think one of the lesson will be work hard, but work smarter. It's mm -hmm. even more. It's even. It's more important. Yeah. Work smarter. It's more important than working hard. Okay. Um, I would tell to live in the present. Mm. Try to not live in the past because of your experience that things that haunt you, your nightmare makes you have nightmare, but mm. also not live in the future to worry too much about what's gonna happen. Try to live in the, in yeah. the present. Throw the brick away. Yes. And I think I will say, it's in order to be happy, health, we say very often, like a, in, in French, we say, uh, I don't know if I can translate it, uh, like an health, healthy mind in a healthy body. Mm. It's like a symbiosis. It's, it's both works together. Healthy and mind and body. How do you say it in French? Um, uh, um, un, esprit sain, un esprit sain dans un corps sain. It's actually, I, I believe it's a Spanish uh, coat, uh, but this is very true. Healthy mind, healthy body. Okay. Yeah. You know, yeah, I think it's a, I, I can I have to research, but is it, there's a, a quote, it's he healthy mind and a healthy body. Mm. If one of it, it's not healthy, it, it won't be as happy as you, you could. Yeah, those are beautiful. Simple too, I love it. Uh, you're all over social media. Georges St. Pierre on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, same, same name everywhere there. What else can we do to support you? How else can we go to, is there a website we can go to? Can we sign up for something else besides watching the series? Yeah, I, um, I'm promoting uh, well-being and, and fitness. Um, I have equipment that I'm, I'm promoting. I, I uh, try to, to, you know, to give people other avenue of how they can mm -hmm. uh, increase their, their health and, and, and fitness, you know? Sure. And, uh, I'm working with uh, TrueConnectTV.fit. It's uh -huh. a platform that promotes uh, health and, and fitness. And I, when I say health, it's not only physical. There is help for uh, mental health yeah. uh, books, guidelines, uh, diet. Uh, there is program training for yoga. Mm -hmm. My program is called Strike. Strike. I teach martial art. I help. I teach people how to fight and maintain their level of fitness. On a, it's called Strike on the True Connect uh, TV .fit platform. I also pro, pro, uh, promote uh, Aqualogic. It's a training device that we use in the water. It uses the drag of the, the water. I think I saw you using this with Ben. Yes, in his uh, videos, right? With water. With yeah. So ben you don't have the load yes. on, on your joint. So it really helped me. What is this? It's like weights in the water. It's not weight. It, it, it uses the drag of the yeah. water, so you yeah. can do the entire body. It's it's very good. It's it's not complete. 
at for it uh, by itself, but it's a great complement yeah. in your training. And it's, What's this it's called a, again? Aqualogic. Aqualogic. Aqua strength, Aqualogic. And also I have base block. It's a very easy portable uh, equipment that you can bring in your suitcase or really? put somewhere near in your house and you can train with it. I'm, I'm promoting this. That's cool. The Aqua Logic looked really cool. I watched you with Ben yeah. using that. That was pretty cool. It looks like it was a, I saw someone else using it with him and it was like, this was a total workout. Like his whole body was oh, yeah. like. Yeah, I learned that when I blew up my two ACL and I, I you can use it as a rehab, mm -hmm. but you can also use it training. as a performance. Now, uh, more and more football, American football players train with yeah. it because there's so much impact in their sport. So much, this man. does not give you the impact. It just help your muscle fiber to, 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 to work out without the impact on your joint. It's and amazing. It, it's good for inflammation. Uh, I got one final question, but I want people to follow this. Is there a website for you as well? Mm -hmm. Base block, uh, aqua, aqua strength, aqua logic. Okay. And uh, TrueConnectTV.fit uh, platform. Okay, yeah. cool. Do you have a personal site? Mm -hmm. George St. Pierre site? George St. Pierre. Uh, dot com or something. Yeah, dot com. Okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Fine, just Google you. Um, I want to acknowledge you, George, for, for being here and for the incredible career you had, for being an inspiration to so many people, for getting even fitter at 40 than when you were at, <laughs> at 25 and Well, 30. I don't know if I'm fitter, but... You look amazing, man. Uh, for the the passion and drive for life you have. You have an incredible joy and passion, which I love being around. And it's fun to see someone who is number one in the world for so long dominant, arguably one of the greatest of all time in your sport. Oh, thank you. Be incredibly joyful, playful, curious, and not act like he has all the answers. So I really acknowledge you for just the human being that you've become and how you've given back to society. And I know you have, um, I believe you have a charity as well, an organization yeah. where you give back for anti-bullying and things like this. Like for you to constantly Try, show up. Trying to help the youth, yeah. I think for me it's important. Yeah, yeah, for you to constantly show up is an inspiration, man. So I really acknowledge you for the gift you've been for the world. And I'm excited to see what you create for the next 100 years, man. You're gonna be around for a long time, so. Oh, thank you um, very much. Of course, man. My final question is, what's your definition of greatness? I think it's linked with happiness. Mm. Everything I've done in my life, it was to get me closer to my ultimate goal. And if people think my goal was to be champion, it's, it's, it's BS, it's not my goal. Mm. I use that as a platform to get me to my goal. Wow. My goal is to have a family and live long and happy wow. with my loved one. That's my goal. And I use that to get through that. Right to get my money, to get through that. But that's, you know, I think that's the ultimate goal is greatness is to be happy. If you're happy, what you're success. Yeah, yeah. You, you, what else? You're happy, you, you succeed, you that's know? That's all you need, man. That's all that matter. My man, George, thank you so much, man. Appreciate you, bro. Thank you very much. Powerful, thank, man. Thank you very much. Before you became the champ the first time, were you visualizing and imagining? Oh, yeah, since I was 14, this is who I am. This is who I'm gonna be on Kentucky. This is the guy. You have to be the champ before you be the champ. You understand that that makes sense? Yeah.